Alrighty everyone, um, I'm going to go over uh, rendering in Lightwave, and um, it's a topic that's pretty basic, but uh, for some reason, I don't know, a lot of people recently have been having some issues asking me a lot of questions about how to render in Lightwave, and uh, here's the old Tron scene, because somebody was asking me some stuff about the Tron scene, so I'll just bring this up. Um, but basically, just, um, just click on the Render tab here, and then over here under Options, you'll see the Render Globals button. All right, and then you have you know tons and tons of options, but uh, I won't go into every single one. But <clears throat> I'm just going to go into you know how to output your render. So under the general tab, you can tell um, you can tell Lightwave the range of frames that you want to render. So the first frame you want to render and the last frame you want to render, and the the step also uh, means in for most cases you'll want a step of one, which means render every frame. Let's say for some reason, maybe, you know, the shot was far too long or something, you only want to render every other frame, you put a step of two in here. Um, for, you know, film and, and video work, you're going to want a step of one because every single frame is going to be rendered. Okay, and uh, you can also specify the width and height of your render, the aspect ratio. Uh, 0 0.9 is a square uh, 4 by 3 standard TV resolution. And then um, you could go, if you go, for example, to widescreen resolution, you'll see the aspect ratio will turn to 1.2, which makes the pixels uh, stretch out so they'll look good on widescreen. Um, but those kinds of things, you know, are up to you, whatever you want to do with that. Um, under the render tab, <clears throat> um, okay, you have uh, options here, which I won't go into too much because there's a myriad of different ways that you can... Uh, manipulate these options to increase, decrease the speed of your render or increase the realism of your render at the expense of speed. So uh, checking and unchecking different things uh, will either increase or decrease the speed of your render and for the most part you can tell, for example, if you ray trace the shadows and ray trace the transparency and ray trace the reflections, all these ray tracing things are going to of course increase the speed of uh, time it takes to render each frame. Uh, the ray recursion limit is the number of times the rays bounce when they hit like trans uh, reflective objects or things like that. So um, uh, I found that if I lower it to, for example, eight or something, I, I don't see any difference in the quality. So you might want to turn that down. Uh, all these things, the filtering and stuff like that. Uh, some of these things you can set in the camera window as well. Um, the anti-aliasing is, you know, the amount of smoothing that the is going to be applied to the image, and actually this is not too bad. Um, I usually go PLD 4 pass Mitchell um, for like a DVD quality work. If you're going for print resolution, you're going to need to increase this much higher. But uh, the main thing I want to talk about is on the output tab, and here's where you specify the type of uh, output you're going to have for your uh, rendering. Okay, so you can actually um, say more than one type of thing at one time, actually. I see if you check mark different boxes, you could, for example, uh, anyway, you could save an animation file at the same time as you save some image files. But, um, okay, you could, for example, check mark save animation, and under the type, you could save, for example, a QuickTime movie, and then under the options, the quick, I hope this doesn't crash, sometimes it crashes. Uh, you can, if you're going to save a QuickTime movie, for example, you could, for example, uh, select H.264, you know, put it to high quality or whatever, or set the frames per second, and then you could render out everything, and then you would get, the advantage to that would be you would get one file, if you want to render this entire animation out uh, as one uh, already pre-compiled movie, you, you could do it right there with save animation. Uh, the reason why you would want to not do this I'll just say none. Uh, why you should instead click on Save RGB uh, is if, if you were rendering an animation uh, using the Save Animation uh, check mark and ran, rendering out to an AVI or a QuickTime movie, and something happens, your computer gets turned off, power outage, you know, light wave crashes, something like that, or you have to stop the render for some reason, you will lose everything that you did uh, because it just has to crash once. And then that 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 movie file um, has to basically go through the entire rendering process before it can be saved correctly. 
So uh, you do not want to do that. You want to render out to individual frames and then later on compile them into a, uh, a, a movie. So if you cl uh, click on Save RGB, uh, under your type you can select various different uh, image types, uh, still image types, uh, bitmap, 24-bit uh, bitmap, 32 bits. Uh, for example, um, you know, of course, a 24-bit bitmap and 32-bit, the difference is that the 32-bit has more alpha information in it. So basically, you would just choose whatever you want depending on what you're doing. So for example, you could use choose a bitmap. Uh, you could choose a PNG is a very good um, bit, uh, good image format because it's, it's already compressed, but it doesn't lose any quality. Uh, JPEG, of course, is very popular because of uh, you know the fact that it's compressed. Uh, so basically, just choose a format that you can work with later on easily, uh, and then what you'll get is um, you just go ahead and click on RGB files here, and then you can go ahead this when you click on this RGB files button, go ahead and search for a place to save your image sequence, and then it will save every single frame as an individual image. All right. So, for example, this this uh, animation here is 360 frames long. So uh, you're going to get you know 360 separate image files. That may seem like a hassle to deal with, but if something crashes in the middle, let's say it gets up to frame 257 or something 254 here, uh, if it crashes, you you won't lose anything but that last frame you were working on. All the other frames up till then will have been rendered already. Okay, and um, that way you can just go ahead, come back in here, and select uh, the start frame as you know the last frame you left off, off on before it crashed, and the end frame be the you know the end frame of your animation, for example. Then you can render the the rest of it. And rendering takes so long, you know you don't want to lose any of that time. All right. So what I usually do is after I've gotten those. Now this won't work for everybody because they've stopped using this, but um, under my utilities folder. Uh, I have QuickTime Player 7, hopefully selecting this won't crash my system here because I'm already running QuickTime in order to capture this stuff here. So if I go to File, uh, under if you register QuickTime Player 7 as QuickTime Pro, uh, it will enable this thing, Open Image Sequence. And then you just go ahead and find the uh, place where you rendered all your stuff and then you all your images, and then you just select the first image uh, file, and it will automatically compile them into a movie for you. Just save it as uh, whatever um, you know, in, whatever uh, movie format you you want. All right. So now that might not work for everybody. I don't think it's available for, for example, Windows users. Uh, a lot of the new Macs just come with a standard um, QuickTime uh, Player 10. So there's other things you could, for example, uh, you know, Final Cut Express, for example. Any video editing uh, software will let you import a sequence of images and save them in a movie. All right, so that's rendering in Lightwave Overview, and I hope that helps out.